Hi, this is the final video in the series of Mechanics 3 videos and this is the final chapter in the book on statics of rigid bodies. So, okay, here we have uh, finding the centre of mass of a uniform lamina. First thing we need to do is to find the area inside there as expertly shaded by me. Um, shaded area is the integral between these limits of the function of that curve. Okay, you should know that from UPO maths. So, find the shaded area first. Now, need to learn these two here. There is derivation in most books of them, but you won't be asked it in any exam I've ever seen, so you need to just learn them really. Um, shaded area times x bar, the distance of centre of mass along the x-axis, is equal to the integral of x times the function of x, dx. Whereas for y bar, it's a half, the integral between the limits, of f of x squared dx. A lot of people forget this half. Make sure you don't. Okay, let's look at a little example. All right, I have a uniform lamina bounded by this curve here and the line x equals 4 and the x-axis. So, I want the coordinates of the centre of mass. It doesn't actually say it there, but that's what I meant. Right, find the shaded area first. It's just the integral between these two limits of that curve, which gives us integral of that, uh, obviously I've square rooted both sides to get 64 over 5. Now, to get the x-coordinate of centre of mass, we use this formula here. So, we know the shaded area is 64 over 5 times x bar is the integral of x times f of x dx. So, multiply those together, integrate and go between 4 and 0 and you get this number uh, well and yeah and you get that number and you get that obviously so 64 over 5 x bar is 256 over 7 so multiply 256 over 7 by 5 over 64 and you get 2 and 6 sevenths and it should look about right always check that on these types of questions you'd expect it to be towards the the end with the most area and that, that doesn't look too bad almost 3, yeah about there ok, y coordinate of centre of mass, again the shaded area times y bar is a half times the integral of f of x squared ok, half times the integral f of x squared dx so we square that integrate between the limits, remembering to half it and we get y is two and a half. And again, doesn't look too bad. Two and a half. Yep. Okay. So there you go. Right. Centre mass of a solid of revolution. What we now do is we get this little area, and we rotate it about the x-axis to form a solid. Okay. Um, obviously, similar to before. First thing you're doing is finding the the mass or volume of this, you find the volume of solid really, you find the mass and have mass per unit volume as rho there, but that always cancels out from both sides of your equation, so we don't really need to worry about that. So, let's have a look at, in, oh, when the formula, sorry, getting ahead of myself, the formula for the centre of mass is mx bar, so the integral between the two limits a and b of pi y squared x dx, ok? So that's y squared x dx. So let's have a little look at an example. I've got here a region bounded by the curve y equals 4x, uh, sorry, y squared is 4x, and the line x equals 4. I rotate that wee, about the x-axis, and I need to find the centre of mass once that's rotated and is a solid. Right, the volume of the solid, firstly, is just pi y squared dx. So, pi y squared dx, y squared is 4x, between limits of 0 and 4, because that's what we've got along here, 
and I integrate that, put 4 and 0 in, and get 32 centimeters cubed. Center of mass is going to be that 32 centimeters cubed times x bar is equal to, and the formula up here, pi y squared x dx. So pi y squared is 4x times x, all with respect to x. So integrate that, you get x cubed over 3, put limits of 4 and 0 in, and you get 256 pi over 3. So we know 32 centimeters cubed times x bar is equal to 256 pi over 3. So obviously we get 256 pi over 3 divided by 32. 32. Oh, we missed a pi. There should be a pi in that one there. Okay? There's a missing pi. Um, where are we? Uh, is 8 over 3 centimetres. Okay. Right, sliding and toppling. Um, we generally in questions you're going to be looking at finding which one happens first. So you'll probably need to look at both situations and say, look, if it's going to slip, what happens? If it's going to topple, what happens? And in this case, the inclined plane, they'd probably say, look, inclined plane, um, gradually theta is increasing. What's going to happen? Is it going to slide or topple first? Your tactics are resolve parallel to the plane, resolve perpendicular to the plane. And then this key fact here, if it's going to slip, friction will be maximized so friction's mu r so between those three little puppies there you can find whatever unknowns you need to from the question if it's going to topple in this case on an inclined plane it's really simple because if it's going to topple you know it's just touching the plane at one point just about to topple so all forces are acting through that one point of contact so you're just going to be able to use um, the dimensions of a box or car or whatever it is to find the angle so you'd know the lengths here and here you'd know where the center of mass is okay pretty simple so center of mass will act through that point of toppling won't it uh, right, let's do an example. This is quite a classic, apart from an inclined plane. You've got a box on a rough horizontal plane and you've got it pulled along by a, or, or pulled, <coughs> excuse me, by a force P at an angle there. Uh, you know the coefficient of friction and mass of the box. So, what happens first? Well, let's have a look at resolving horizontally and horizontally we get equation 1 the component of P, P sine 45 horizontally equals friction now I've put friction here not kind of as normal acting through here because we don't know what's going to happen sliding or toppling obviously if the box is about to topple it will topple about that point and these forces, any forces will be acting through that point there okay? um, if not then they won't they'll be acting along here so, resolving horizontally, P sine 45 is friction. Resolving vertically, R equals P cos 45 plus mg. So, that's resolving vertically, R upwards, mg downwards, and P cos 45 downwards. And then you look at the situation. You say, if it's going to slide, friction is maximized. Substitute that little beauty there into these you know mu, you know the mass of the box, etc. and you should get P is 18.5 newtons. Now, let's look at if the box topples. If the box is going to topple, then at uh, the point of toppling is point A here, that's where it's going to topple about. So, why don't we take moments about that point? If we take moments about that point, R and friction are both acting about that point as it's the only point still in contact with the surface. So by taking moments about that point, those forces are acting through it and thus have no moment. So all we have is the moment of Mg acting this way. Uh, what's that? Anticlockwise. So Mg times the distance, the perpendicular distance of 0 0.5 is equal to the force P is component here of P sine 45 times perpendicular distance of 1. So we equate those two and we get P is 27.7 newtons. Right, obviously, less 
uh, force is needed before it slides, more force is needed for it to topple, so it will slide first. Oh, thank you for listening. I hope this series of videos have been of some use. Goodbye.